Hello everyone and welcome to the second vlog of the karting journey for 2023. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about February where there was quite a lot of action and as you can see uh, this is me in the very first race. I've just picked up a lot of dust on my tires and have lost all grip. Um, this was a terrible race in in my view just in the sense that I was just overly overly cautious i mean if you looked at the start i also kind of like tapped off at the last minute should have kept it a little bit down should have closed the door uh for the guy in the blue in front of me managed to to sneak past and if anything i'm actually quite impressed that i managed to stay with him as as long as possible so how it works is the guy in blue um who's got the white number he is in the same class as me he won the championship last year and he is the target to beat this year so that is number 188 who for some reason i'm still so close to uh last season when i wasn't even driving in the masters i was driving with the red numbers i was absolutely nowhere so it's really really cool to see myself uh yeah so close to him but how it works is there's two classes that are happening simultaneously in this race there's the white numbers which I'm part of, and in order to race with the white numbers, you need to be old. So I'm old over the age of uh, 30, well, I'm turning 30, 32 this year, and that is the requirement. So anyone born in 1991 or above, or below, I should say, uh, gets to qualify for the white numbers, and it's called the DD2 Masters. Those who we saw in the beginning with the red numbers, those are the, the normal DD2s, or the juniors, and... They, they definitely are in, in a league of their own. So what essentially happened in the qualifying for, for this day is that we managed to qualify first, which was a big surprise. No one was expecting me to be first of the DD2s. And what essentially that means is that I had the red number starting in front of me. And what we're going to actually be seeing in this video now is another red number is going to go past me. So there's a couple of red numbers behind us. Uh, that we managed to to out qualify and the one that was behind me uh, there he's going past their number 186 technically his number shouldn't start with a one it should just be 86 um, but he's quite a let's just say we, we beat him for this race because he got a nose cone penalty so that means he bumped someone it was me I think or someone else uh, he does like to make contact and we ended up beating him for this race because he got a five second penalty because you're not it's not supposed to be a contact sport um but the idea was to just let him pass i could feel him pushing on behind me he wasn't in my race uh to go with and like i say this is probably not my best racing because what essentially happened was right in the beginning uh my teammate who we're gonna see <laughs> the two of us drive into each other in in, in the second race um, I think it was him. He goes off and he throws a lot of sand onto the track. And I'm one of those drivers where if the track is perfect and conditions are perfect, then I'm going to put it on pole position, which is what I did uh, in the qualifying. You know, I'll start first. But as soon as the track uh, has anything wrong with it, there's some dust or anything like that, I think my inexperience kicks in and I get very, very cautious. And how I manage my caution or my fear is to drive slower and that is not essentially what what you want to be doing in karting so like I say these conditions were not ideal for me and we can see uh, Connor who's driving in kart number 188 the the champion contender uh, has now gone way into the distance what I was happy with this race was that uh, my other rival my brother um, who's a little bit older than me I think he's three years old than me uh, he's driving also in my my team he's got the the Charles Leclerc cart I've got the Burl essentially the same thing his one is well this was your its first race out so it's a little bit more of a fresh uh, chassis where my chassis gosh I sound like such a such a typical racing driver blaming you know blaming the tools and stuff um, my chassis is is a little bit on the old side and for race two essentially uh, after the smack it got snapped again so race two we we had a snap chassis and of course you don't have enough time uh, before race three to go in and you know weld it back together 
and have something that can resemble some sort of you know proper cart so instead what we did was we bolted on seat stays and the problem with that is i think if we had just done the one seat stay it would have been fine but we put on both on either side and it made the cart incredibly stiff and what that means is that when i came into the corner um i just i just didn't have any any we call it bite uh, so the the cart didn't want to turn when i turned the steering wheel uh, another term for it is that i was experiencing understeer and that is not a nice experience to have when you're going uh, very very quickly because essentially you turn the card and it wants to keep going straight and you're like I need to make this corner otherwise there's gonna be a bit of a bit of an accident um, but coming back to to this race again like number 186 in the red numbers was quicker than us during the the practice uh, not only for today but also the practice last week and it was really surprising that I, I did get that qualifying uh, result. Like I say, no one, I don't think anyone was, was expecting it, which is always fun. Uh, me coming in technically my rookie year in DD2 Masters, first year out, and we're getting that, that pole position. But very, very happy that I was able to, to hold with this guy. I think what's happening now is the dust has kind of left. I'm getting a little bit, you know, back into to my groove, but I'm also well aware that I'm not racing number 186 so I'm not racing number 186 and he does tend to make a bit of contact so I actually don't want to overtake him and it's it sounds so weird here you are you're doing this race and there's a cart in front of you and you don't want to overtake him but I'm well aware and well I don't know if I was that aware during the race but I have seen my brother's GoPro footage and there were times when he was uncomfortably close to me. In fact, I think my back wheel might have touched his front wheel um, with him maybe getting that that close to me. Which, like I say, he's probably the, the, big, the big family rivalry of the, the two brothers, the accountant versus the actuary. Uh, you know, we like to put our two professions out there on the line on, on this track. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been interesting, February, because here we, we did the race, but the weekend before we, we had a practice session and I always say, you know, on the track you can have your, your greatest moments and your, your lowest moments and sometimes they can happen on the same lap. But last weekend, well prior to, to this race, definitely was a horrific experience. Um, emotionally, I... Yeah, I was actually quite surprised how how upset I got, and I think it's just it just shows how invested I am in this this hobby, because um, I was screaming and I was shouting and uh, a little bit out of out of character for me, but essentially what had happened was my chassis had snapped, you know, just before that. So like I said, my chassis is on its on its last legs. So we, in order to you know weld the chassis, you got to take the entire engine off and you know go because you're putting all this heat and you've got to get to these little spots where where the chassis has has snapped. And we put it back on and I go out for this for this very first practice session and uh, we'd race something called DD twos and that stands for direct drive and the twos for the two gears, but the gears weren't connected properly, so I didn't even manage to make a lap. I, I was able to, it was weird, I was able to go out, and the car had some drive, but as soon as I went into second gear, something slipped, and uh, I actually parked where we coming up right here. So yeah, this part of the track, I had to park. So that was, that was the first session. That was the first session. And then I remember the second session, uh, I'm getting ready, just about to go out with the practice, my dad comes around, and he's like, no, no, we have to change the tire pressure, we have to change the tire pressure. And I'm like, well, what, what, what you mean we're going to change the tire pressure? I'm like, no, no, Dad, you know, it's, it's a little bit too late. We, we're just going to go out for, for how it is. And then it was just, it was just a comedy of, of errors. There was another time we come coming for the next session, and Dad had forgotten a, a specific bolt on the one wheel, which is, you don't want to, you know, just before you're going out changing something or adding another bolt, it, it can be a little bit off-putting. Um, then dad and I were arguing about the setup I wanted to just keep the same setup that I had get some more confidence under my belt you know the race was in one week's time I was happy with the cart I was like you know let's just keep it how it is and and do our best and dad's like no it's practice we got to just change things let's just keep you know rolling the dice on setup until we 
try and find uh, some speed. So there was some disagreement with that. And what essentially happened was, because Dad was changing the setup and then changing it back, changing the setup and changing it back, there is the the kingpin uh, that wasn't correctly tightened. And the yeah, <laughs> I had another session where we went out and the whole kingpin collapsed and the steering just oh, was horrible. And uh, yeah, actually at this corner pit bend, we ended there. So not, not very good in practice, but let me walk you through. This is the start of the second race. So here we, the cart is fine. At this moment, it's fine. I'm on the outside, which is really, really unfortunate. And you can see I come through here and who slips past me but number 116, which is my other teammate. And that was not ideal. Essentially, you can see my brother, he's the guy right behind Connor in, in the blue. Those are the guys I'm supposed to be racing, and, and now my teammate uh, Neville has, has overtaken me, which is not, not ideal. And essentially what had happened was in the previous race, because I was driving so cautiously, I wasn't putting in very quick lap times, and my brother, though he finished behind me, um, and though we also beat number 186 because of the, the nose cone penalty, they ended up starting in front of me for this race because they had put in quicker lap times and that's how the qualifying works. So instead of me qualifying third and being on the nice inside, I was on the, ooh, this is this is the part where we managed to get overtaken and it, oh, that 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 break broke the chassis. And there's there's another driver coming in and I'm like, no, I don't wanna let you pass um, because yeah, that, that impact from the, the teammate there took him out of the race but now my cart is is very sore. So <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see how we how we try and drive in and hold this thing together because the chassis has has now snapped. So once your chassis snaps, it's very, very loose at the back. So now we're gonna get something called a lot of oversteer and it's gonna be really, really tricky to to get it around these corners. But coming back to how the whole um, race weekend works is you have the practice in the morning just to make sure everything's good then you have qualifying which determines your grid position for heat one then you have heat one and your quickest lap in heat one determines your grid position for heat two and your quickest position for heat two determines your grid position for heat three and because we were in and amongst one of the red numbers instead of me starting third on the the inside of the the track um, what happened was that uh, it was, I think, yeah, it was Connor, uh, then it was the number 186, then my brother, and then myself, and it meant that my brother, though he should have been starting, say, second, on the outside, the dirty part of the track, um, he managed to get onto the inside. So 186, in a sense, helped my brother, although chatting to him after the race, he did say, I think it was even in this race, that the guy got another nose cone penalty, because this time he, he crashed into my brother, and, and pushed him up and they had a little bit of uh, you know contact so definitely a joker in the pack for for our race you know when you when you watch formula one it's just formula one imagine having formula one and formula two on the grid at the same time essentially we would be formula two the slightly slower guys and then you got some of the other formula one drivers driving amongst us because there still are some red numbers behind us so i think how many people were there in total for today i think for this race i think there was like 12 or 13 if if i'm not mistaken um so there was the four guys right in the front then us and then like i say there's some red numbers behind us now the interesting thing with number 199 is uh, this is steve bowman and i've actually taken his number so he used to drive as number one two three and i came in and i said you know number 23 michael jordan can have the number he's like yeah there's no emotional connection to this. And he wasn't even going to drive this year. So he wasn't gonna drive this year. And um, he decided to, because his kids race and his kids are very, very fast. They're like some of the, the best in, in class. And what's essentially happening here is I'm driving up against uh, Bowman who, like I say, hadn't, hadn't practiced. So I'm very, very upset that I am behind him. Uh, there was one race where he completely dominated me last year because when I was in the red numbers and he was in the white numbers we sometimes would, would have our, our, our races, like I say, again together. And essentially, in the rain, this man is 
is dynamite. I remember driving in the rain and he comes in and he, he overtakes me and I'm like, oh my gosh, Bowman's overtaken me. I need to start pushing harder. And then he like overtakes and just pulls away and I realized he hadn't overtaken me in the rain. He had lapped me and it was only like lap seven or eight. I'm very, very bad in the wet. But this man in front of me is is an absolute genius in the rain. I think he came second for for that race. And essentially what's happening here is I'm trying, because this is very important that I overtake him for the grand scheme of the championship. So I might have lost this race, you know, my brother and, and Connor are far off into the distance, but I desperately need this championship point. So like in the previous video, well, previous year part, where I wasn't racing number 186, I was kind of like just trying to maintain my, my distance. This guy, I'm pushing. So I'm pushing really, really hard. And um, like I said, we don't have the best, uh, <laughs> the best cart conditions. But we managed to close in on him here. And it's so difficult because you want to have like a nice exit out of those back S's onto the main straight and, and try and have an overtake. Anyway, we're coming here through, through Cosmic, a very quick part of the circuit. And he would tell me afterwards that he was tapping off there because, well, I think it was for the second race, he was tapping off there on purposely to just you know, slow us both down, which is a, that was an interesting strategy. Anyway, um, I know I'm quicker than this, than this guy, but like I say, the cart is not in a good condition. We've just, I'm surprised I'm still in the race. That's one thing that I'm, I am grateful for. I'm still in this race. My teammate, you can see all the marshals are standing over there in the corner, attending to my teammate who, I think what, what, what happened was we came in and, you know, for, for the first 180, and I did make contact with him, uh, with his, my front wheel touched his back wheel, you know, and I did nudge him, which, which was wrong, you know, it, it, was a, it wasn't intentional, or it wasn't something that I, I should have done. What I was trying to do is get in and, um, you know, make a move, just as you can see over here, I'm trying to make a move, oh my gosh, we push in, oh, I remember doing that, that was, that was scary. So I was trying to like overtake over here, but with, um, some of the understeer that was happening or there was a lockup or something, I, I wasn't able to slow down in time and I didn't make contact with him. And it did push him out quite wide. And then I was like, okay, you know, that wasn't the best thing to do, but you know, let's continue the race. And then from my perspective, it felt like he was like, you know, stuff you, Michael, you bump me, I'm gonna bump you back. And it felt a bit like a, like a revenge hit. Um, so I'm very angry. This is me driving <laughs> with with a lot of anger. Although I think this race is gonna gonna end soon because that was like the big move, um, you know, to kind of make get to get past uh, uh, Steve there. So I remember feeling like very very angry and just being like, you know what? Ah, what's what's going on here? So driving the car chart and I'm doing very, very low times. It's not what I want. The car's not how it's handling, but fortunately we were able to, to overtake uh, Bowman. And now it's just me trying to you know, bring the car back, back home. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually pause this because I think yeah, for the next five minutes, it's just, just this driving around. So let's pause and um, jump, to the, jump to the next race. Okay, so jump to the next race, and you know, once again, we're starting on the outside, which is not ideal. Like I say, we've got the seat stays both bolted, and you can see right on the bottom of the camera, although now, now it has turned. Um, bottom of the camera, you can see there's that, that seat stay, so I've got again number 186. I know he likes to make contact, or he's not afraid to, so I'm staying far back. I'm just like, you know what, I'm not getting involved in this battle here, so very very cautious start for me um, I just want to kind of get past you can see there again he's sliding around probably if I had been a bit more aggressive I would have gone past him but to my surprise who is that that manages to overtake me while being super cautious but Bowman again so Steve Bowman is in front of number 186 uh, my competition for the day Connor and my brother and you can see there's Connor Oh, diving past my brother. It, oh, my brother trying to make a move and kind of going defensive. Like they're having an intense race in, in front of us. Um, like that's where I should be. I should be racing there. But no, here I've got the super, super stiff card. I remember being so upset and being like, what am I doing here? But I'm like, I just got to get it over and I've got to get these points. Anyway, I need to overtake Bowman. But again, 186 is just 
they're in my way but it's weird they're in my way but they're quicker than me so um here i am trying to stay with them and thinking oh i really want to be up there with connor and my brother and you know having the race for for the win but what's interesting here is 186 comes in with a move oh steve bowman closes the door and i'm just watching this and i'm like guys please don't crash and then spin and take me out so you can see constantly in the back of the mind you keep thinking you know what could potentially go wrong not the best driver mindset you want to just be going flat out saying you know what guys i'm just giving it my all so here we come into turn one and one he's, he's quick but you can see it's just it's, there's a lot of instability there and it's like oh what's happening anyway we're cutting in bowman's going defensive I'm keeping up with them on the 180s. We can got very different lines, which is also something I'm like observing now in this this video. And I'm upset because I'm a little bit too far behind, and I would love to have tucked in with number 186 to get past Bowman. But what he's done is he's not gone front, and I think he's going to check up. But now I've got Bowman 199, and again, like I say, if we had to finish the race in this position, I will get third overall for the day but then I'll finish the day on 89 points. Where if I can beat Bowman, I will still have third overall for the day, but then I'll have 90 points going into the championship. And I think 90 points, I never scored 90 points um, in DD2. Like I never, I never got on the podium, never even got close to it. Um, I'm trying to think if I ever even finished third for one of the heats, probably maybe like when there was a bit of a bumper bash or something like that, but very very rare so this it, it's strange like for me this was one of my worst race weekends from a driving point of view like i absolutely hated the cart in these these two races these last two races and like i say race one was compromised by by the track condition um so i was very very upset with with how this weekend went but it would be the first time that i get a a trophy since clubman's so it's my first time i'm getting a trophy in a in a regional in a regional race which is i guess a positive to take away from it so that was really cool and um yeah first time i'm getting 90 points since my my clubman days clubman's was a fascinating time um in the sense that the first my first year out in clubman's i came third overall for for the championship but i never won a day completely so i would go on to come also second in the championship the the year following that my brother won it then and then we progressed first to something called senior max and then my brother came straight to or i think yeah, we did senior max for a bit and then we moved into to dd2 but I never, I never won a full race day. I won a, there was one race, I remember with Clubman's, I was uh, by far the fastest, so I put it on pole position, and it was back then when we had like a, a chain. And I remember saying to my dad, I was like, Dad, I think the chain, it doesn't look right, it's a little bit, you know, can we just check it? And my dad's like, nah, Michael, it's all in your head, it's all in your head. And we come to the race, and what happens is the chain um, comes off on the warm, oh yeah, on the warm up lap. So there I am trying to fit this chain on and the race starts and of course everybody comes in and, and laps me. And I finished last, I managed to unlap myself, so catch up to everyone, overtake everyone, unlap myself, but still came last. And then of course for the next two races, I came you know first and first. But my brother, because he came first, second, second, and I came last, first, first, I ended up finishing second for, for that day. So that was, that, that, that memory still haunts me, it still haunts me and I still haven't won a full race day. So hopefully that's gonna change this year. But you can see what I'm trying to do here is I'm quicker than Bowman, but I've just got too much understeer. So at turn one, I cannot make the overtake. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what, I'm running out of time. That's where I overtook him last time. I can't overtake him there again. I need to figure out a different spot on the track. Now the track, I mean, overtaking it's turn one, and it's the the 180s but like i say what you do when you've got a lot of understeer you can't really or you just don't have the confidence to make the change in the the corners but what was interesting is bowman was telling me that he was purposely slowing down there because uh, he knew i couldn't overtake him there but what that does is it brings me back into play because i had actually fallen behind trying to make these overtakes i'm you know not in a good position so i come here 
And look, see, it's a bad mistake there. I'm trying to overtake, but it's like, you know what, you're not going to make the move there. And this is where I think, do, do I, what do I try here? I come in, I'm really, really tight with him. We come, no, he's going defensive, so it's not, not this turn, but you're going to see, I'm going to try and out drag him on the straight. So I do feel like I've got a good engine this year, which is, which is great. Um, and that does give me confidence to try and make, you know, passes down the, the straight. So we're going to come here. I don't know if we can see how many laps are to go. Um, but I'm like, you know, don't try and overtake in the corners. So let's see. He goes a little bit defensive. Am I doing the same? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to overtake in the corners. Good. See, so now I just line him up. Now he's really, really close to me. I'm right on his tail. Okay, now he gets a little bit away unless I come through here. Okay, no, we're not going to do it this, this lap. But we're coming inside. This is the back straight. This is through Cosmic Corner. We're now going through Golf Club. This is where, like I say, he's, he's tapping off intentionally, which I even look to maybe see if I can make a, a sneak over there, which isn't the, the most ideal place. Now I come in. Oh, like, I should. I should be able to, to do it, but I'm like, I just don't trust the steering of this quad. And you can see, oh, I kind of lose it. Even just by going a little bit off the, the race in line there, you can see, not, not very happy. Um, now I've got to do a lot of work to try to catch back up with him again. But for some reason, I tend to get a lot closer than I thought after making that mistake. And we're on the back S's, and you can see he's he's got quite a lot of space. But again, Bowman is going to... He should just drive, just drive hard here. But for some reason, he, tap, he keeps tapping off through Golf Club, which brings me right back into the situation. Now we have, have Pit Bend. Um, where we're quicker than him, you can see we're doing the slipstream. I'm like, no, 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 just, just don't, don't. Why am I going for the, the turn? Don't go for the turn there. Uh, you don't have, you don't have the steering capacity. You can see very, very defensive that he's going in for the 180s, which is great. Allows me to come in. I'm going for a slightly wider line. Is this where I do it? I start lining him up. He comes in. He slides a little bit there. Nope, nope. It's. Gosh, how, how long was I behind this guy? Um, <laughs> you can see we are going to... Like, this shouldn't be my battle. This I'm, I'm driving here for the championship. I'm knowing that every single point counts. So I am quicker generally, but you can see, like, oh, if I had... I have to tap off. I have to tap off. I just don't have the confidence in, in the cart because if I go in too deep... I don't have the bite that I want in order to take off, you know, complete the move and I'm going to just slide off. So I think this is where I start realizing I need to, I need to consider here the back S's. If I can get a better exit than, than Bowman down the back S's and I can drag him, um, that's going to be good. Because you can see he's, he's starting to slide now. He's, he's not in his best condition here as well. So we both... <laughs> It's the it's the last race of the day. Uh, fitness is, is definitely playing a role in as well. Because in order to turn the cart, you need a jacket, and that pushes quite a bit. Now you can see this is great for me because Bowman goes defensive. He doesn't know that I've got no under uh, got like understeer. So he's going super super defensive, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to drive the normal line and get as close as possible to this guy. And once I'm as close as possible. I think that no, I'm still, still too far away. Still too far away. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Something happens here. Yes, I remember. I just had to push. There we go. We managed to slip past. Oh, my gosh. That was, that's, that's an overtake at like 124 kilometers an hour. Uh, that was absolutely insane. And I think, yeah, we, we end the video here because that, that is it. So, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this video has gone way, way too long. Um, just want to say, yeah. All in all, it was a great time and a big shout out to, to my sponsors, Aussie Crypto University and Mafia. And I will see you all next month for another karting video. Keep well, everyone. Cheers.